Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I um, welcome you all for this introductory lecture uh, to this course, which is um, uh, the first lecture for this course on modern Indian political thought and I am Mithilis Kumar Jha and I teach political science in the department of humanities and social sciences IIT Guwahati. This introduction is uh, basically about uh, the difference between political theory and political thought and what is so uh, distinct about modern Indian uh, political thought and in what ways it can help us to understand Indian politics and society better. So, that is something we, uh, we are going to uh, discuss today and um, then also what is the uh, method to study Indian political thought what are the thinkers we are going to study and why we have included some thinkers and why there are some thinkers which are also absent from the course. So, we will discuss about uh, uh, that issue and then uh, we will discuss about the challenges, the kind of um, uh, problematics that these modern Indian thinkers were facing and in what ways they were trying to respond to such challenges not just particularly to India, but also about uh, the global world problem or world challenges of their time. And uh, finally, we will uh, discuss the focus of this course and uh, uh, why, uh, why we should um, study and in what ways we should study modern Indian political thought and in what ways it can contribute in um, Indian political theories that is the emerging discipline. I hope in um, Indian academia. So, uh, these are some of the things we are going to uh, uh, discuss today in this lecture. As you know, uh, the modern Indian political thought, it emerged in the context of formation of nation and state in modern India and in the making of the idea of India. So, uh, the beginning of modern Indian political thought is with the emergence of the idea of nation, nationalism and the way modern political thinkers in India began to theorize or conceptualize this idea of nation and what kind of India they are going to build and the, so the idea of India becomes very uh, crucial to understand Indian political thought. So, uh, thinkers like Gandhi and his views on Swaraj and his critique of modern civilization help us to understand uh, in what ways they, uh, uh, they began to theorize, conceptualize about Indian nation and Indian civilization which is distinct from say western civilization or modern civilization. Similarly, Nehru and his views on secularism and statecraft and Ambedkar's social reforms movement and his views on caste and liberal democracy, these are the um, ideas which helps in shaping the uh, modern political discourse in India and it seems that they were all engaged in this project of making modern India. So, modern Indian political thought emerged simultaneously with the emergence of nation and state in modern India. However, many people may argue that these all thinkers are engaged in one similar project of constructing the idea of India. I wish to emphasize this point one similar project. So, many people will argue that all these modern thinkers were basically engaged in one similar project of constructing uh, the idea of India. But in actuality, if you understand, if you study and as we uh, move on this course, we will come to realize that they actually represented various shades of opinion and ideologies 
and also differed from each other quite substantially. So, it is not that they were just engaged in one similar project, but they were also different representing all kind of ideologies and opinion. So, that we have to keep in mind while there is this uh, ideas of nation or modern state in India, they also differed and represented different sets of opinion and ideologies in their thought and articulation. Now, now comes the periodization of IPT uh, that is Indian political thought. So, as this discipline evolved, there is this division of Indian political thought into ancient political thought which is also Hindu political thought, then medieval political thought which is also called Islamic thought and then the modern where is the kind of reconstruction of in some way revival of ancient Indian political thought. So, this is the kind of classificatory uh, uh, division or a kind of uh, understanding of a linearity in the evolution of political thought in India beginning from ancient to medieval and modern, but it really not it is not really very helpful as we know that modern Indian political thought as it emerged in a particular context of colonialism and from uh, there, uh, there is a kind of break from our pre-colonial uh, pre past, but also the continuity. So, many thinkers like Ambedkar, Nehru or in to some extent Lohia, you will find a kind of substantial break from the Indian past, but also continuity more so explicitly in the thoughts of Arvind Ghosh, Rabindranath Tagore and also Gandhi. So, there is a kind of continuity and change that we see in Indian political thought in modern times. So, the better way to approach uh, this uh, political thought is not this periodization of history, but also the continuity and change that happens over a period of time historically. Now, um, uh, the other point that we need to understand is the uh, emergence of modern Indian political thought was result of um, orientalist challenges that means when they began to uh, uh, produce knowledge about India, their claim was you do not have any Indian, uh, Indian uh, do not have political thought because their thought conceptualization or intellectual tradition is oriented towards other world. But that is not the case and the beginning of modern Indian political thought was responding to such kind of orientalist challenges and um, that we certainly see after the um, finding of um, uh, Arth Shastra by Har Prasad Shastri when they claim that okay from the very beginning from the ancient time you have different um, tradition of political thought in India including Dharma Shastra, Niti Shastra and so on and so forth. So, um, so the beginning was from this um, response to the orientalist challenges. Now comes the question what is the difference between political theory and thought? Now, as you know political theory and political thought is intimately connected with the issues and concern that is related to politics. So, there is some kind of overlapping, some kind of ambiguity when it comes to differentiate between what is political theory and political thought and uh, also because it is connected to uh, the issues or concerns which is related to politics but one can also make some differentiation between political theory and thought where in, in comparison to political thought theory is more broader also systematic and a generalized statements that help in understanding or explaining politics in a country or society. So, concepts like freedom, equality, democracy and justice help us to understand the um, society and community in a better sense and not just a particular community. Whereas, political thought is considered to be more narrow and limited to articulation and reflection of a structure and functioning of politics and it is usually done by individual or a group of individual, uh, a group of individuals. So, uh, so there is a kind of um, uh, differentiation between political theory and thought but uh, this differentiation is not really the compartmentalization of political theory and political thought on the one hand. If you look at the disciplinary evolution of political science, for a very long time political theory derived its concepts and ideas 
from political thinkers, beginning from um, uh, Plato, Aristotle, Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, from their thought we, uh, we derive certain concepts and then there is a normative term, uh, there is the historicism and other kind of uh, development in political theory. So, there is a dependence on political thought also, but political theory uh, tends to be more broader, more systematic and a kind of generalized statements which helps in the understanding of politics. That is the working kind of differentiation between political theory and thought. So, thought may help theory in terms of uh, increasing its vocabulary, making it more uh, reflective and up applicable to understand and explain any society. So, when it comes to Indian political thought or Indian political theory, we can uh, begin with this um, Eurocentric views for a very long time, uh, which uh, dominated Indian academia and many of you uh, may be asking this question that why it is so necessary to understand Indian society or Indian polity using the concepts which is completely borrowed or de uh, derived from a context or a history which is very far from India. So, uh, such and why we have to worry about uh, Marx, Hobbes and Rousseau uh, to understand Indian society and Indian politics or to explain Indian politics. So, there is a kind of Eurocentric domination or hegemony where uh, for a very long time it was believed that only western thought or philosophy whereas, in eastern or Asian and African societies and community, it is characterized as tradition or culture. So, this binary of waste which produce philosophy, which produce thought, but eastern society which produce tradition and culture is now deeply problematic and many responses have come up. One of such response in India came very early in 1950s was by K. C. Bhattacharya his text Swaraj in idea. So, this Swaraj in idea is like we should look for the concepts and categories or ideas which is rooted in Indian tradition or Indian society or uh, so to say the cognitive freedom from the western or Eurocentric viewpoints or concepts. Now, uh, the task for us is should we in response to the Eurocentric views use a narrow nativist or kind of indigenous approach to understand thought or theory or we should avoid any binary between east or west or tradition or modernity or indigenous and foreign and focus more on dialogue which in Indian language also called samvad. Now, this point we have to emphasize. So, for a very long time when a society study other society using its own vocabulary, the knowledge that is produced is not result of dialogue or samvad because it is one uh, knower or the producer of knowledge is always superior in the hierarchy of the whole structure of knowledge production. But when we um, when or in comparison to that we cannot also have very exclusive narrow nativist approach uh, to study politics or um, um, uh, ideas and concepts in any tradition. So, now uh, the point is to focus more on dialogue where there is a give and take, there is accommodation, there is a plurality, there is a kind of inclusiveness in the approach and in articulation as well. So, I would like to quote and how uh, for a very long time western theories remain impoverished because the knowledge that was produced there is not really result of a dialogue or a fruitful dialogue between two tradition, but it actually uh, uh, some kind of export of ideas from one tradition to understand and explain the society in other tradition. So, Norman D. Power, one of the political scientists, Palmer said that from India may come influences which will widen the horizons of western political thinkers and which will also give political ideas a sounder foundation of philosophical and metaphysical uh, speculation. So, when you really think about dialogue or samvad, then this possibility of a sounder foundation for philosophical or metaphysical speculation is possible and not when there is a kind of you know export of ideas and uh, no, no the 
no import of ideas from the other tradition. So, the dialogue remains very crucial to understand uh, the political thought in a broader sense and not in a narrower sense of indigeneity or nativist kind of approach. Now, what will happen if we study Indian political thought in this way? The chances are we can pave the way for the um, emergence of Indian political theory. So, many people argue that Indian political thought and Indian political theory, should we focus more on Indian political theory or political thought and which is more desirable? The uh, answer to such kind of question is that the political thought, the method as I am going to explain in the next slides is more helpful in terms of paving the way for the growth of Indian political theory and also in the corpus of existing concepts in political theory in general. So, uh, what is the method? How we should study Indian political thought? One is which is very conventional that is about the thinker centric approach. So, we, we pick up certain thinkers or certain number of thinkers and we study the political thought in that community or in that society or in that nation or state by studying the individuals and their ideas through their writings, through their treatise and other works. So, this is very conventional when it comes to Indian political thought, be it western political thought or Indian political thought. We have been for very long time uh, used this approach of con uh, thinker centric uh, study of political thought and we reduce thought to individual. Now, of course, I will uh, in the next point I will explain how we need to move beyond that. Now, the, the drawbacks of such approach is uh, some individual figures get prominent or uh, prominent space in the political discourse of that country and some uh, other thinkers remain obscure. So, that happens when you study political thought by reducing it to thinker or keen, uh, some individual. Now, we need to shift from this con uh, thinker centric approach to more thematic or theme based approach where we using one theme one can study a number of thinkers, a number of works in a comparative perspective and that gives more inclusive, more accommodative or broader understanding of political thought and ideas in any tradition. So, this is the uh, approach we are going to take in this course where we will study the political thinkers, but we also study the themes and we will see how that thinkers is situated in the larger body of thinkers or ideas that is. Um, uh, that is there in their contemporary times. Now, why a modern Indian political thinkers and what is, uh, what is their significance? First, as I was saying in the beginning that these, their ideas emerge in the context of colonialism in response to orientalist thinking and they have metaphysical and epistemological assumptions that differ sharply from those of the West. So, that is the beginning of modern Indian political thought that was the in response to the colonialism. Now, in their metaphysical and epistemological approach and assumptions they differ from the western um, approach also. So, one of the classical ways or conventional ways of looking at western epistemology is the binary between modern, pre-modern, rational, irrational, material, spiritual. In Indian approach you will see more a kind of synthesis or evolution of one stage to the other rather than the uh, dichotomy of modern, non-modern, rational, irrational. In India, there is uh, in Indian approach you see a kind of synthesis and especially so in Gandhi where you will see the binding or even when Tagore is arguing about home and the world or east and the west. So, there is a kind of synthesis which is there in Indian epistemological and metaphysical approach. Now, um, these thinkers and their ideas were future oriented, but deeply embedded in the present context. It means that when they were, uh, so these thinkers in a way was actually deeply actively engaged in the politics of their time and they were responding to the concerns of the present, but they were also had, had a vision for the future. So, many political thinkers that we are going to discuss in this course also uh, thought or had a vision about India. So, they were future oriented, but deeply embedded in the present or in the contemporary issue of their time. And they were also as I was saying that they were uh, political activist 
and the combined theoretical reflection with engagement of the engagement in the politics of their time. So, be it Gandhi, Ambedkar or Nehru, they were deeply engaged in the politics or the challenges of their time at the same time while they were reflecting about the society, politics, state and nation in India. So, through them one can then understand the two centuries of Indian history, it various ups and downs and as seen and interpreted by the men and women who themselves help shape and define these most interesting times of our country. So, in a way this course will allow you to understand various strands of thought in Indian political tradition and also its ups and downs over a two century, uh, two century which, which is actually seen and interpreted by these thinkers and they help in shaping and defining such ups and downs in Indian uh, uh, tradition. Now, what are their concerns? Their concern first was to harmonize between seemingly opposite or contradictory forces that was operating in the society. So, between urban and rural India. So, remember Gandhi talking about India soul resides in the village and Ambedkar or Nehru having more urban outlook uh, in a sense for them village is the, uh, uh, is the domain of superstition, uh, untouchability or irrational practices and customs and scientific rational method or approach is to uh, cure such irrational practices, customs and uh, etcetera. So, uh, they were trying to harmonize this um, urban and rural and also the other major challenge that we faced uh, for a very long time and continue to uh, challenge our contemporary politics is the question of national unity with the religious diversity or religious discourse that uh, we have. So, in India as we all are aware of uh, home of different religions or many religions and these religions and identity construction on the basis of this religion which also deeply influence our politics tends to or certainly when these thinkers were articulating about the vision of India, vision of a state, there is a polarization on the basis of religion also. So, how to harmonize or combine this religious diversity or discord on the one hand and national unity on the other. That remains one of the greatest challenge for most of these thinkers including Gandhi, Nehru, Tagore and many others and we will discuss when we will discuss these thinkers. The other challenges before them was the advancement of rights of lower castes and the women. All these thinkers were also not just engaged in getting the political independence or liberation from the British rule, but also to, uh, to uplift the lower caste and the women which were historically marginalized and suppressed in Indian society itself. So, the question of women education, uh, removal of or ab abolition of uh, caste, removal of untouchability, all these things are part of such discourse about social reform along with political reforms and political freedom and we will discuss it um, when we will discuss Ambedkar and Lohia and many others. Now, uh, the other challenge for them then was the individual freedom with social equity. Now, many uh, modern Indian political thinkers were western educated also and they realized the significance of individual or individual as a unit to understand a society. But they were also aware of the existence of community life or social life in India. So, for them to harmonize between this individual freedom and social equity was also a challenge and many thinkers did reflect on this problem. Other was material prosperity with spiritual accomplishment. So, thinkers like uh, Arvindo Ghosh or Tagore or uh, Gandhi to some extent actually uh, deeply reflected upon this question of uh, this um, western uh, or material uh, prosperity along with the spiritual quest of individual and community. Then they were also deeply influence or help in constituting the nationalist ideals at the same time they had go global approach. So, one of the example I can give you is Arbindo Ghosh. So, uh, Arbindo uh, was a nationalist 
and he was a uh, very radical uh, uh, nationalist in a way and he actively engaged in the radical politics between 1904 to 1909 or 10 for a very brief time. But his approach to nationalism or nation was deeply guided by the spiritual urge of human being which they thought after the nationalism there will be the um, uh, growth or eventual development of cosmopolitan um, or international global ideas also. So, in many of these modern political thinkers you will also find where they were fighting or constituting national ideals, fighting for the national ideals or constituting national ideals, they were having global approach at the same time to the national question in India and also beyond India's boundary. So, the orientation of these thinkers then uh, where and these thinkers were as I said thinker activist was outward as well as inward. So, in seeking to unite their country and make it more democratic, they also looked at the most productive ways in which India can engage with the other nation in increasingly interconnected world. So, these thinkers were not just uh, concerned and bothered about India within its uh, territory, within its geographical context, but also what role India can play in the larger human, um, uh, human uh, civilization or in global politics. So, they were deeply uh, engaged with the question of say imperialism, first world war, second world war, international organizations such as League of Nations or United Nations etcetera. So, several Indian thinkers had the whole of humanity and not just Indian as their audience. So, when they were writing or thinking about or reflecting about uh, challenges, they were not exclusively bothered about Indian concerns alone. They were having some broader or bigger canvas in their reflection about global peace, harmony or uh, justice um, and etcetera. So, uh, their theories or resolution that they gave for Indian problem or predicaments that was applicable to the global problem as well. So, one of the example one can think of is the second world war when Congress drafted a resolution uh, where the anti-imperialist uh, movement in many parts of Asia and Africa was supported by the Indians. So, Indian freedom struggle while they were fighting for uh, their political independence from the British imperialism at the same time they were extending their support to the other countries fighting for their independence from their uh, colonized uh, uh, colonial power. And in this draft basically uh, the reflection of the Congress party shows that um, uh, when they are discussing about India's role in World War II, they were also reflecting about the question of democracy and imperialism. So, they wanted India to join the war because British were claiming to fight for democracy or free world. At the same time denying that freedom or democracy in their colonized country. So, the many Indian political thinkers argued that you cannot have uh, this dual stand of fighting fascism in the name of democracy and denying democracy or extending democracy in your own colonized territory. So, India can very well be part of democratic struggle in any part of the world, but it can not uh, join that forces when it has a dual characteristic of fighting fascis fascism in the name of uh, democracy and justifying uh, imperialism in the name of denial of democracy in its own colony. So, that kind of understanding uh, reflect the deeper engagement of these thinkers with the global problem and global challenges. Similarly, when the UN was constituted Indian thinkers were engaged in this, this thing. So, what do you see uh, about the engagement and as I was saying what the different strengths of thought in these thinkers. So, broadly one can divide Indian thinkers into three categories. So, one group of thinkers favored the re imitative reproduction of modern western modes of political action and organization. So, they uh, thought they were in a sense modernizers also. So, they want to modernize India, but that modernization they want to do themselves and not by the colonial or the outside forces as the imperial power like British was claiming that they are here to civilize us. But these thinkers were actually saying that we want to modernize, but we will modernize by ourselves. We do not need outside force 
to uh, modernize or civilize us. But so they wanted some kind of uh, reproduction to suit the local interest by modifying the concepts or the ideas here and there to suit, suit local, local circumstances and then, uh, then construct a modern India. So they were a kind of uh, supporter of imitation and reproduction of modern western modes of political action and organization. Then there are a second group of thinkers who were talking about revival and revival of an admiration for India's classical tradition. So they were basically the revivalists. So whole first uh, few decades of um, Indian renaissance, you will find a lot of thinkers or activists uh, talking about revival of India's glorious past or ancient past. Then you have the third group of thinkers which tries to blend traditional Indian and modern western paradigm of politics and Gandhi is one such example of this synthesis and also to some extent Tagore and many others. So, we will when we will discuss these thinkers we will come to come to engage with this three uh, three categories of thinkers that we have in Indian mol, uh, modern Indian political thought. The other question is to discuss this idea of tradition and mod, uh, modernity and the dichotomy between the two. So, for a very long time many westerners and western scholars including some Indians believed India to be a traditional society and uh, West as a modern society. And uh, this tradition and modern uh, dichotomization actually uh, does not help in explaining or understanding any society because in most of the society no matter whether how much economic or materially advanced that society is, there is a combination of both tradition and modernity as many scholars have argued. So, correct way to, uh, to, uh, to understand a society is this combination of tradition and also the modern. So, in, uh, in many thinkers we will see this simultaneous presence or uh, continuity with change or change with continuity. Um, in their thought and articulation as well. Uh, now, I would like to say something about the presence and absence of some thinkers. So, if you look at the uh, syllabus, there are remark uh, very explicit or what I should say um, the starking absence from the list like Balgangadhar Tilak, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Dadabhai Naurazi, Subhash Chandra Bose and Deen Dayal Upadhyay. So, uh, uh, I have been very selective in terms of choosing the thinkers and their themes for this course and that excludes a number of thinkers which I could have included given them contribution or their contribution in the thought or their influence in shaping modern India. But I have been very particular in selecting some of the thinkers and excluding some, but I request you all to look at their works and um, um, ideas as well. I had some criteria to uh, to include certain thinkers and not to include so much of thinkers and I use some objective for uh, that purpose. So, first was I wanted to include those thinkers who are representatives of various ideological strengths in modern Indian political thought. So, I was uh, so some uh, some thinkers who are more or less talking from the same same kind of ideological or intellectual tradition. I tend to uh, tend to include only one or those who are representative or key figures of that ideology and not all. The second was that these figures like Gandhi or Tagore has helped in shaping the founding values of Indian Republic and those values continue to influence Indian politics and society even today. So, um, their contribution in terms of founding the uh, values of Indian Republic and in what ways it shaped and continu continued to influence modern politics as well. So, certainly Gandhi, Ambedkar, Nehru, Lohia, their thoughts are very powerful in not in their time, but also in our contemporary times also. So, I have used that criteria to include some individual and exclude few. The other point was these individuals were both um, dealing with theory as mean at that means they were very reflective. They were uh, uh, they were articulating the challenges of India and how to resolve that challenges. At the same time they were 
engage in the politics. So, they combine both their theory and practice and it is also called the praxis. So, those thinkers who were not just reflecting, but also engaged in Indian, um, uh, Indian situation or Indian challenges, I have included them. So, uh, this presence and absence is, um, is actually determined by some of these criteria which I have followed. So, the focus of this course is both individual thinkers which I have selected depending upon their articulation and also engagement with the politics of their time. So, we will we have individual thinkers and themes that they have dealt with. So, the so suppose uh, Gandhi his notion of Swaraj or Jawaharlal Nehru his ideas on socialism or statecraft. So, similarly we have uh, many thinkers and their themes and we have uh, the both. The other objective of this course is to historically enable the student to situate these thinkers historically in their personal and political as well as ideological domains. So, one of the objective of this course is not just to understand a thinker and their ideas, but also the ideological domains in that helps in shaping or constituting their ideas and their approach to politics. The other objective of this course is to make the student familiar with the various stands of modern political thought. So, this point I wish to re-emphasize that there is no one singular hegemonic construct that was happening through this modern political thought. If we closely and deeply engage with some of the issues and ideas they were engaged in, that will unpack a lots of possibilities that can help us to understand our modern society in a better way. Now, in conclusion, I would like to say that modern Indian political thought is a rich repository of ideas and concepts which emerge in response to colonialism and simultaneous with the formation of nation state and uh, uh, nation and state in modern India as I was discussing in the beginning. So, um, uh, that is the emergence of modern Indian political thought. Now, uh, a broader and thematic, so uh, not uh, limiting the political thought to some individual or few individual, but in a broader thematic way, if we study Indian political thought in that way, it can substantially contribute to the corpus of existing concepts to understand Indian society and politics better. So, if we unpack these thinkers, their ideas and concepts in a broader way, more thematically doing some kind of comparative study and locating them in the larger body of ideas and literature, then perhaps we can better understand and it can help us better understand and explain Indian society. It may also pave the way for the growth of Indian political theory, which is marginal discipline in Indian academia. As I was saying in this uh, lecture that uh, the political uh, thought, Indian political thought has the potential to, to uh, help in contributing not just Indian political theory, but theory in general as we have see, uh, seen through the example of Norman D. Palmer. Now, uh, the other point which is the prospect of this kind of thinking is that these thoughts, which we call modern Indian political thought, we are simultaneously emerging in various vasa. Vasa is the different linguistic spheres like modern Bengali, Marathi, Assamese, Tamil or Malayalam or Hindi sphere. So, these ideas, concepts were articulated and it effectively shaped the political discourse in these spheres also. So, I believe that their specific as well as the comparative study will further open up and enrich the understanding of modern Indian political thought. So, once we unpack or expand the understanding or study of political thought from thinkers to themes and then we try to study these themes not just among the thinkers, but also in different literary spheres that may further expand and enrich the modern Indian political thought and certainly the different vocabulary and ideas that we use to understand Indian politics um, as well. However, this course is more about the key thinkers and their ideas or themes that led to founding of modern Indian republic and continued to reverberate in our contemporary politics. So, our study will be more uh, towards the thinkers uh, which we have selected and their ideas which really help in the founding of Indian republic 
and continue to influence or reverberate in our politics. So, we have uh, uh, that on outline, I would request you to go and find out these readings to understand whatever I have presented in today's lecture. So, first is by P. K. Datta and Sanjay Palsikar, Political Science Volume 3, Indian Political Thought, which is published by ICSSR and OUP India in 2013. So, this book and particularly the introduction will help you to understand in a better way, what is the difference between theory and thought, what are the new methodological challenges or methodological approach to understand Indian political thought and in what ways uh, it can broader our understanding of Indian society or Indian uh, politics in particular and uh, the corpus of concepts and ideas in theory in general. The other text you should look at is by Ramchandra Guha, Makers of India from the introduction again you will get to know about the powerful ideas of some of these thinkers and uh, uh, how they used their uh, reflection or articulation not just to solve Indian problem, but also the global challenges. The other text is uh, by Pentham and Duch, Political Thought in Modern India, introduction from this text again help you to understand this different approach in Indian political thought and western political thought and how a possible dialogue can perhaps enrich the whole corpus of theory and thought in general. So, uh, from this you can also uh, read such approach. Uh, other text you should look at is by V. R. Mehta, Foundation of Indian Political Thought and uh, M. P. Singh and Himanshu Rai, uh, Indian Political Thought Themes and Thinkers. So, this is all for today's class. I just wish to uh, say a, a thing or two about the way political thought is done now and uh, the way it was done by these key thinkers. So, you see uh, historically uh, the individual engaged in political thinking or theorization, especially in modern uh, times were deeply engaged as I was saying that they were activist thinkers, they were engaged in the politics and at the same time they were reflecting about the politics, theorizing the politics and providing the solution to the existing challenges, which was not limited to their time but it has uh, relevance in our contemporary times as well. But now in contemporary times you see the uh, domain of political thinking and theorization in mod academia, in universities. So, the scholars they reflect about the society, write about the society, writers, activists they do it. But uh, for us uh, the fortunate part is all these thinkers were also deeply engaged with the politics of their time and uh, faced the challenges and were providing the solution to such challenges. So, I hope this course will be very interesting to uh, all of you and in the next lecture we will be discussing Raja Ram Mohan Roy and his views on religious reforms. So, that is all for today. Thank you.